Hi, I'm Cesar Santos. Let's talk about colors. When we look at the history of color, or better said, when we look at colors throughout the history of art, we can try to simplify, detect its uh, trends of color application, and roughly divide it into three periods. The primitive colors, the so-called brown school, and the impressionist colors. The primitive colors can be seen in cave paintings, also in the art of the East, China, Japan, Persia, India, the Middle Ages, all the way to the early Renaissance. When we look at these places and periods closely, we realize they share something in common. They filled in an object by simply presenting an outline, introducing some shading within the object, the background also having just simple local colors. This trend went all the way to Filippo Lippi and a new introduction was made by Sandro Botticelli. Up to this point, objects casted very little shadow or maybe no shadows at all. In primitive art, the dominant element is an outline and this is a naive response to the tactile perception. This primitive color scheme was very appropriate for religious paintings because they gave a feeling of the unknown, of a feeling of the otherworldliness, while colors that represent form bring us down to earth. Let's talk about the brown school. Brown is not a color in the rainbow. It's more of a mixture between the complementary colors. Brown is the color of the earth, the dirt, and the trunks of the trees that grow from it. Up to this point, shadows are brown. Brown is the color of darkness. We didn't learn about how colorful the shadows can be. We learned that from the Impressionist. The term umber comes from the Italian word ombra, which means shadow. Colors like raw umber, burnt umber, red umber, and green umber are colors that we use in the shadow. This new take on color created the effect of light and dark, or what we call chiaroscuro. We trace this back to Masaccio and fully developed by Leonardo da Vinci all the way to Velasquez. Joshua Reynolds in his book Discourses talks about how brown should be of the same color for unity, allowing variations in the lights. This interest in depicting the solidity of form that took possession in Western art kept art indoor, because only with a controlled lighting effect we can describe the form in a better way. With the brown school, artists did not neglect outdoor subjects. Actually, they placed their indoor lit figures against outdoor backgrounds. Velázquez is a good example of how uncomfortable he felt placing his indoor figures against outdoor settings. So, with his limited palette so typical of the brown school, he started using a very loose manner of paint application, which is more common in the next school and the next color, the Impressionist. All this takes us to the Impressionist, where they reject the outline and these brown colors. Actually, no more browns and blacks in their palettes. Their colors were represented by the natural spectrum, the colors of the rainbow. The Impressionist recognized the whole fact of vision. The visual picture could be studied now by what it is, a variegated rays of the solar spectrum passing through a point behind the lens of the eye and cut by the retina. During the Impressionist period, artists could for the first time take their paints, their colors outside to paint and explore with the new advancements in science in terms of the visual effect of light. They on purpose rejected principles of paintings of the past to propose a new way of expression, of applying the color. This changed art and its course forever. Modern art has a trace of all these different types of color application with their flat colors and the outlines or the, the actual objects representing form and also using the brightest colors to date making the Impressionists look great. Let's wrap this video up. Color is what gives the objects quality through the eyes of the artist, the fantasy, 